Hi guys, shut up. I'm filming. Can I have some quiet in this house before I jack up? You guys, this is my moving day. This is my day day. I can categorically tell you my chest that I have not packed shit. I'm really scattered right now. I have not finished packing my own makeup box. Everything is just there. I just finished filming. I have this magomago makeup on. I was in a hurry and I was not even in the mood. But I still look I'm still a beaut. What are you talking about? You guys, this is the beginning of my moving vlog. Um, my flight is in the night, so I feel like I still have some more time to pack. My friends are coming. Mr. Leb, they are coming. You guys, come and show yourself. I, well, this morning when I was having my bath like this, I was scrubbing Nigerian poverty away from me. <laughs> I'm running away. Stop <laughs> my... What am I I've cried. cried. I can't cry again. This time I had You guys, it's the love of my life. I've not cried. <laughs> Why will you cry? What will you miss about me? It's not saying you're even going to miss ah. me. Wow. Up. Are you really saying that? Is this pride? Is it pride or what? It's not pride. I'm just thinking like, what could you, what would you what possibly would miss out like about? A whole loss. Like a whole loss. I'll see you guys when I'm, when I'm dressing up to go to the airport. I want to go and sit down with my phone now and learn my Canadian national anthem yeah. because I'm already a Canadian. <laughs> I don't want to leave this camera. What that TikTok said I should do? Oh, it's a child. And I'll do it now. She will first reach. As I'm going from your house floor. You know that this is weird, but guys, I went to pick up my sister's fabric for a wedding like the actual bit I bought. I went to pick it up from the tailor's place and I just met my family members on the road. I had to dress up in a car. And I wanted to bike for the last time in Lagos because I loved biking a lot. Every satanic odor, every satanic ghost to will scatter you by thunder, fire, or God in the animals. Amen. Jacko do the long. Jacko do the long. I want to run the long. I want to be a word. So, Jacko do the long. I do the long. I do the long. I do the disappointment. I do the long. I do the long. I do the long. I recover the plane. She will board this evening with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Recover the highway with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Even the pilots. Father will cover them with the blood of Jesus. They will, they will not see me in the mighty name of Jesus. Three powerful hallelujah. 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 So I said my final goodbyes to Adirike, and yeah, we just brought my stuff from the car. My friend was giving me something to bring, and I had to return it because I didn't have any space, and I wanted to bring the Ashrebi badly i mean i know i'm just going to wear it once but i just wanted to wear it because i was missing my sister's wedding and stuff so this was my friend pushing my stuff i decided to carry these bags because i was trying to save space and weight i was going to check in the luggage basically and i was feeling i ah, see these farms as i was feeling the yellow um what's it called the yellow card for the yellow fever form Compared to all the gist I've had, it's like my own traveling process was very, very seamless. The only issues I had was with the size of my luggage and I removed stops and it was already okay. Uh, after This was only for my field. Even at the immigration, I didn't have issues. Then I didn't plan to carry money. I know it is weird. I am the only person ever that planned to travel from Nigeria to Canada without holding dollars. My mom just looked for that money. In the airport for me i didn't even remember that oh i needed old money um i passed through two security checks the first was like the immigration and the other one we had to like drop everything we had on and they we put it in some kind of thing that just checked if it had drugs or stuff like that nobody asked me for any money nobody asked me if i had agricultural like produce you know it's called the favor of god it was pretty seamless i have been struggling with my stuff i have i think i've carried too much but i have so much and luggage you guys I'm so tired. My shoes are still undone from the security check. I'm carrying a backpack. So I'm carrying my proper hand luggage. My shoes are still pretty undone. And I'm carrying my tripod stand. And my files and my passport are with me. I'm so tired. Thank you. <laughs> Someone just said sorry to me. Let me put on my nose mask before I catch coronavirus. 
so i was at the boarding gate for like say 15 minutes and it was time to fly when i was still welcome nigeria i was wondering that excuse me what was going on but when i saw Oja ball i'm like Chinese bank thank you but it was pretty stimulus just enter the plane those people say i you to say i back if you want i thought of all got jealous of those people in business class because they had more leg room right and i proceeded to find my own broke broke girls position See, eh, you guys, I have promised Larry that he would not hear the last of this. I was wondering, oh, Larry, why did your bag, two boxes, weigh 78? Like, oh, just scale. You guys, I just saw Larry's hand luggage and I found eight packs of Maggie in a man's luggage. You guys, it was time to fly. They gave us that stuff and I was so hungry. Please, old food, though. Anyway, we, what's the thing called now? We took off, yeah, and we were on our way to Frankfurt. When I got relaxed, I undid my shoes. Food, food, food. My nails are so pretty. Thank you. Awesome. You guys, I practically starved for almost two days. Please just old snacks, old food, because everything they will serve you. I mean, they even tried, but everything they served was something else. And then they gave me just one cup of water. I mean, I used to drink water like something else. I'm like... This is all I'm going to get. Like some water? Yeah, please. And I asked for like two extra cups, but it wasn't still enough. Like, water is ch is the cheapest whatever. Why are you suffering? Why are you suffering my life? That was the only thing that tasted well. I had some wine and yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for um now we should try his first and then i went ahead to try mine and from the look of my face you can tell that it was disastrous oh my god the only reason i ate it was because i didn't have a choice it was sweet at some point you know when you're very hungry and you don't have a choice well, the food was very delicious at some point i finished it and i barely flew so later on they served us this again and i had only chocolate cake i didn't have that stuff and they gave me a bottle of butter finally it became so cold and i was trying to show you guys the amount of stuff i had on i was finding it so hard to sleep because i didn't have enough leg room and i'm so used to putting my legs up to sleep <laughs> that's bad behavior but then anyway i slept i woke up i tried to see a movie i went from latest hollywood to comedy i didn't find anything to watch and i went back to sleep so i guess i was really tired because by the time i woke up we were in frankfurt germany and yeah we exited the plane when they say hi thank you for coming safe i'm like thank you thank you for having me and oh my god my problem started from here because the walk from this place to the security checkpoint in frankfurt ah, ah. it was like they were trying to punish me for buari's sins they knew that this plane was coming from nigeria and we had to suffer for all of buari's sins it was so far jesus christ you guys, I had to carry all my... You know, I had a lot of stuff, right? And I had to carry everything. So I passed a security check that um, they had to remove your cosmetics and food. So all of your cosmetics and food stuffs, like, should be in the luggage that you check in, not in the one that you are using as your hand luggage because they're going to remove it. And another thing that bothered me was the fact that the bus that we took from that point to the boarding gate was very, very clustered. For like coronavirus, I was very, very anxious in the bus. I found this place to sit because I liked the view. I watched a lot of airplanes take off and some landed. I thought I was going to be talking as I was like going through the process of checking in and everything in the bus. I feel like we left home pretty late and I had to face the wall of checking in. When I was at home, I checked in, I weighed my stuffs and it was like 24 kg each. So I was like, we are going to overlook it now. I had removed all my favorite stops. When we got to the airport, it was way 26,007 kg. So I offered to like pay. But they were like, no, I have to pay $180 for everything. And $180 is a lot of money. I didn't pay. We started removing stops. I removed my pando yam. Two of my pando yam. I removed it. I, wala, wala. And my mom told me to remove it at home. I was like, no, I will like go with that pando yam. I removed my spaghetti. I removed my fish, my smoked fish. I removed some of my clothes. I guess that was all I removed. 
I rearranged some stuffs. My makeup stuffs were very, very heavy. And you guys know, I cannot, what am I going to do without my makeup? My mom was like, she can't go them to me. I gave her that look like, you are not, you are not, you are playing with me. I removed some jean trousers to remember. My luggage was overweight. Then 10 kg, it was supposed to be 8. Then I had carried my tripod stand and my school bag. I had to collapse my handbag into my school bag because it was bulky. Then I wore my other sweater and I tied my winter jacket on my waist. I looked like a mad woman. Now I am at Frankfurt Airport. My flight is not 2 o'clock. It's quite like 7 or 14. And I'm going to sleep. I don't like this airport a lot. I feel like even Nigeria airport was not distressful because there's so many stairs. I'm so tired, you guys, and I'm cold. And I'll see you guys when I'm about to board again. So, Toronto. Peace out, you guys. I'd advise that if you are coming, make sure to wear your stuff from home. Like, it's so hard removing stuff at the airport. It's a lot of work. Thank God for my family and my friends. Oh, Jesus, I would have just started crying that yesterday. I stand a multitasking queen. I didn't want to carry Nigerian bread into Canada, so I decided to brush my teeth. Some people did not, but I'm not going to call their names. Clean teeth, yay! So, peer pressure. Normally, I have a very small appetite. There was no way I was going to eat something I was not sure of. But my family, when I was able to get to them, so you'll find something to eat. Eat, buy something, do this, do that. I proceeded to buy something after walking around the mall right we saw this place i saw chicken everything i was not sure i was not familiar with but then when i saw chicken i'm like i will eat chicken now so i bought this pie and it tasted like trash oh my god there is nothing that i'm not trying to bash other people's food but it was oh my god i took it and put it back in the trash where it belonged this was my first attempt at recycling and i felt so proud i'm african so i decided to keep that bag it's almost time guys and it's i thought it was a two hour flight but somehow some it's it's an eight hour flight i'm not sure it's like it's an eight hour flight or it's a two hour flight but i hope it's like two hours because eight hours jesus christ that means we are getting there that means that means they are behind they are like five hours behind i don't understand guys but i just want to sleep on a bed right now i want to sleep on a bed i'm so tired Hey, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> what are you doing? You can get food. I bought it though. This plane was better than the last plane. It had more leg room and I was in the middle of strangers. So I changed my seat. I didn't know you could do that. So if you are on the plane and there's some space and you're not comfortable, you can always say you want to check your space i put my drip on put on my mask i didn't want to catch corona i don't know if you guys noticed i moved with corona people like they came on the flight with me so i was a little bit bothered i didn't want to catch corona because i didn't catch corona in nigeria tell me why i should catch it when i'm going to my father's land so i moved to the what's it called to the window side and it was time for food oh my god this was the greatest punishment of life see the food i saw it and i'm like eh I, I looked at it again and I'm like, are you are you serious? Are you serious right now? I was hungry. I tried the bread. Ah, who girl? Yeah, it was like, Bomo. I'm not even going to try to be true. She was hard. Ah, then I tried whatever this was. It was okay. And I tried these leaves. I don't. I think they thought I was a goat or something because, and lettuce has never tasted so bitter. And I went to put myself in trouble. I took water. Oh my god, it was like I had cola not. Oh my god. Lofansa did me well, but with the food, mm -mm. no. Then I this pasta. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Old food. Old food. I didn't have a choice. So I ate it. You know when they say I might be jabiti in domio. I had it and this was just all I had. And then at some point it felt like the plane was not moving, the weather was bad. I was so tired. So I decided to see a movie. I wasn't feeling it. So, I mean, I watched a little bit. I wasn't feeling it. So I put my hair in a bun as usual. And whenever I'm doing this, it means only one thing. My bonnet is coming on my head. And it is time to blink my eye twice and take a nap. So I just did this so I'll be comfortable. You can always like hold this scarf and, some, and stuff. Because whenever you're on the plane, it feels like... I don't know how to explain it. Anyway, you guys... I had bad food. I couldn't see a movie and I slept. 
So Larry came back to sit beside me because he could not, he was choking. He couldn't breathe well without me. And yeah, the journey got a bit more interesting. I said to see Sex and the City and I actually finished it this time. I'm honestly tired, you guys. Like, I feel so dry because it is so cold. It is so cold, you guys. It's so cold. My lips are about to start breaking. My skin is so dry. So I felt a lot of emotions at this point. I was tired, I was frustrated, I started to cover my life, I started to miss my family. I was just so tired. I mean we were going and going and going and it didn't look like the the plane was moving. I decided to do the usual, you know the vibes. I kit up, I blinked twice and you know I went to sleep. So I woke up and I decided to play this game. I was losing and I had to stop. I'm not a loser in Jesus' name. Then they saved this. Oh my God. <laughs> this stuff tasted like calamity. I wanted to try it at first, but I couldn't. <laughs> He obviously tested badly, but he wanted to deceive me. I did follow, follow, and said to try coffee, and God, it was horrible. Orange juice for life. So they didn't serve us any more disastrous food after this, thankfully. And we had gotten to the piercing, Toronto piercing, I think. Um, airport. This airport was better than that of Frankfurt. It wasn't so stressful. First of all, I was so excited. I had gotten to my motherland, and who are you? You cannot talk to me anyhow. I was excited. I called the wife I met and told my cool. parents that I was there. Sorry, my mom. But the father of put us somewhere for immigrants and students. It wasn't bad. The elevator wasn't working. I was disappointed. We just arrived at um, Toronto. Our flight was delayed because it was raining. So we just got here. You guys, I'm tired and I'm spent. I'm having cramps too. Today of all days. So I'm about to check in now. I just came to quickly use the restroom. Um, I just feel one form that they said if you this is your first time of coming, feel it and stuff. I honestly hope that immigration is not a lot of work and we don't have to be in a lot of places because I am tired and my stomach hurts and I want to eat. You guys, I am famished. You guys must have seen what they fed me on the plane. So I saw this and started dancing like my home, 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 my home. You guys, immigration was seamless. They didn't even ask me for the littlest thing, like COVID test. They didn't ask me. They didn't ask me what I was going to Canada to do. They didn't ask me to declare how much I had with me. They didn't ask me for a lot of things. It was like I was invisible. It was so seamless. I was waiting for my uncle here and I was so cold. Contrary to everything I've heard. Oh, they would drill you, ask you more million questions. They didn't ask me anything. The only issue I had was that there was a lot of us waiting for the study permit. Anyway, my uncle came and we drove into Canada. As we were going, I was like, ah, what's so special about this place? Is this not a Kedja? Does this place look like um, Todd Milan Bridge? 